Greetings and welcome to the Saco City Council meeting for Monday, May 1st, 2023. Call this meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. Let the record reflect that all counselors are present. And with that, I'd like to invite you all to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. Uh, there's no items under general this evening, so moving on to item five, committee correspondence to council. Any committee correspondence this evening? No committee correspondence at this time. Uh, opens it up to item six, and that is public comment. First up is William Zafferson. For those uh, that are gonna come up and speak, please go ahead and speak directly into the microphone. State your name and address for the record, and please keep your comments to three minutes. Hello again, uh, I'm Bill Zafferson. I live at One Cortland Circle down on the Ferry Road. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor and, and city councilors. Uh, I'm here tonight to advocate once again for a uh, action on a sidewalk that would run from Bayview to Seaside. I already know that you've received multiple emails and personal uh, requests which underscore the need for um, safe means to be able to walk alongside the ferry road. And over time, I think that has only just gotten more dangerous. There's more traffic, there's a lot of activity. Now everyone's been looking to see what's been happening down in Camp Ellis. And as people walk on the side of the road, there's a lot of traffic. Um, uh, on the meeting that you had on March 4th, uh, I have, by the way, I'm going to start off by saying I have great respect for all of the work that you all do. But on March 4th, I think you missed an opportunity. And by basically taking no action or just essentially pushing the consideration down the road to uh, considering possibly doing sidewalks throughout the city, I think that you failed in an opportunity to really seek some, some answers to some questions. And some of those questions that I, that I think should have been raised are, Gee, what are some of the alternatives that might be able to be considered? That would be number one. Number two is, is it possible for this project to be broken down into, into, into segments? Uh, either, uh, either portions of the sidewalk be built or portions of the project be, be taken care of, such as I know some of the drainage issues. Uh, thirdly, uh, I, I guess I was asking um, the question that people were very concerned about the cost of a sidewalk and the cost of the improvements that go alongside it. So the question that I had is, has anybody actually reached out to seek funding on the state level? Remember, this is a state road and, you know, physically asked our, our um, a legislative delegation to be able to provide some input of whether or not funds are truly available. And then fourth, I said, well, you know, we do have professional staff who've, who've looked at the project. Has this actually been put out to bid to actually come up with a true cost of what this is going to, to take in order to build and provide all the necessary improvements? Unfortunately, no action now means that more time and more people are, uh, will pass and more people can be at risk. On Saturday, uh, I stood in front of my house doing lawn work and between 10 and 12, I counted 73 individuals who were walking or riding their bicycles. So uh, 73 individuals, 57 were on foot, five were in baby strollers, and 11 were on bicycles. And they were of, of varying ages on the kids and, and adults on the bicycles. Without safe access to Camp Ellis and, and the beach, we are now squandering a great resource. And finally, I would just encourage you to at least place some funds or take some action to continue to push this project along. You've already committed uh, a substantial amount of money from a survey perspective, and so I would ask that um, you reconsider and include some monies in the budget to take care of uh, at least some aspects of a sidewalk project on the ferry road. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your opportunity to uh, listen to me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Don Pylon.
walked in the door. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, my name is Don Pylon um, from Glen Haven Circle. Uh, I just want to make a comment uh, to uh, Bill Zafferson's uh, remarks. Um, if you're going to do anything uh, on Ferry Road sidewalk, um, if you appropriate some money, appropriate some money to uh, repair the existing, we call it the trail, uh, Ferry Road Trail, Repair that, because there are a lot of um, areas where the white line for the uh, uh, traffic is all crumbled, and it's dangerous walking. I walk my dog on Ferry Road. Um, it's dangerous when the cars are coming toward you, and there's no white line. So it's a very dangerous situation. So if you do appropriate some money, repair that section as well. Um, I'm here today to, uh, to discuss the, uh, the budget. Um, it's a very uh, good budget in that you gave us a lot of detail. Um, there are some areas that I'm very concerned about. Um, and I think there's an error, but I may be, uh, may be wrong. In the assessor's portion of the um, uh, budget, let me, maybe I could preface that by saying, are you going to do a um, reassessment, a reevaluation this year or this coming year? You are. Is that why you appropriated uh, additional funds? Because I see that the administrator's budget is $478,634, but the maintenance effort in the fiscal year for 2023 was only 225000 So did you? Upfund it to cover that um, reevaluation. Is that, that Mr. Is that Mayor? We, we normally don't answer back in public. This is not comment, a, but, oh, I'm sorry. Conversation John, happy piece. to catch up with you after the meeting. <laughs> okay. Later, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, other issues uh, that concern me were um, in various departments. Um, Having been a mayor and having built budgets before, uh, I have seen departments um, uh, put, they fund, they put money into various lines. Um, and every year that money shows up. And I don't know what they do with it. I know kind of what they do with it, but for example, the fire department. There's a, a line in there that, um, it's called um, equipment, um, and when I was mayor, it was $6,500. It would show up every year, and I think that same line, equipment, um, is only $2,500 a year, or furniture. No, it's furniture. It's called furniture. I don't know what they're doing over there, but I can't imagine they're breaking furniture every year or furniture needs to be repaired, but it was $6,500 when I was married, now it's $2,500. Take it out. If they need a chair, let them come to the council and say, I need a chair. But that's just one thing. In anticipation of building the budget for, for councils or mayors in the future, I see in 25 to 27, in the equipment uh, list, they are, they're going to replace the ladder truck, for example. The ladder truck that they're going to replace is going to cost, they're appropriating or anticipating that ladder truck's going to cost the city $4.8 million. That's a huge amount of money. You could buy the city of Saco for $4.8 million. So let's try to be proactive here. In the past, I think that we have um, uh, tried to get grants to offset the cost of these things. I think we need to be proactive and ask these department heads to search out grants to offset the cost that we, the taxpayers, are, are buy, or have to provide. So whether it be fire, police, public works, police cars, I'm sure there's federal money available to buy police cars. I know that there's, um, federal money and um, 
state or federal money for fire equipment and fire trucks. I just can't in, 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 um, emphasize to the council and the city administrator to put the, um, ask these um, department heads to look for federal funds who buy equipment that is available to them uh, or find federal money to buy equipment to help take the burden off of taxpayers. That's all I have to say for now. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Up next is Lindsay Pylon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Lindsay Pylon, 16 Glen Haven Circle in Saco. And I'm here as a member of the Board of Trustees of the Dyer Library and Saco Museum. You've seen me before. Um, I just want to advocate once again for the, the city's generous contribution to our budget. The money that comes in from the city is in large part covers our payroll expenses and, and some other operating expenses, but in large part what it doesn't cover is um, improvements to our physical plant. We have two buildings, two historic buildings, and uh, programming is very important. Outreach to the community is important. We are working with not only the school system and our education programs, uh, creating programs for the middle school and other schools. We are reaching out to um, uh, assisted living and, and elder care facilities like the landing. We're doing programming for them. We, we would like to be expanding our programming. Right now, we are in the midst of our 2022 to 2027 strategic plan. Being any responsible 501c3 ought to have a very good strategic plan, and we do. This year, the one that we're developing is, um, has some dreams in it. We need some, um, some upgrades and some improvements to our building so that we can bring in a little bit of technology for programming. I think we can be of much greater use to the community in what we're planning in the strategic plan. That's all going to take money. We need a new parking lot. That's going to take money. Um, there are some other, other maintenance issues, and that's, that's all on us. We're not complaining. We, we the, the community at large supports us in part um, through our annual funds, two annual funds a year, and when we have a specific need, we, they, they step up. We're trying to make some energy, uh, energy improvements. So uh, again, we, we have dreams, and we would love to make good on those dreams, and we really, we really appreciate the council's and the city government's support. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Dan Ross. Hi, my name is Dan Ross. I live at 54 Ferry Lane. Uh, I'm here to agree with Bill Safferson, uh, but I want to say to make two other points. One, um, based on, uh, I watched the March 4th meeting where this was discussed, and I um, you know there was a lot of discussion about a lot of different streets in, in Saco that would like new sidewalks, but uh, this really, it's really kind of an apples and oranges comparison. Ferry Road is one of the main, the, the main boulevards in Saco. It's a state highway, uh, and it's really become a recreational th um, uh, throughway, and uh, uh, more and more people are using it. Bill did the Bill did the count, and since the pandemic, there are many more families and strollers. It's a very dangerous situation, and um, I really think it's urgent. And I hope you guys will not. Uh, uh, delay any more than uh, necessary. Uh, the second point is 
Uh, when I watched the meeting, there was uh, the number $2 million was being thrown around, as, or not thrown around, but was, that was the estimate for the project. And um, I think that's a misleading way to think about it because about, as I recall from the meeting, a half million dollars of that was for a, uh, the bridge project near Seaside Avenue, which was said in the meeting that that has to be done anyway. And so really, uh, we should just think about this project as $1.5 million of new money uh, in addition to what we as the city are going to have to pay down there anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up next is Nancy Bancroft. Good evening. My name is Nancy Bancroft, and I live at 2 Cortland Circle, which is on the corner of Ferry Road and Cortland Circle. It's a very desirable area, thus high property values and high taxes, yet it's one of the few busy areas in the city that has neither a bike path nor a sidewalk. This is my third or fourth time addressing you over the last two or three years on this same issue. And on two occasions when I couldn't be here, I wrote to you. What's more, what more is there to say? Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. The foot and vehicle traffic still are considerable and walking there is still unsafe. But apparently, if we don't keep coming to these meetings and repeating ourselves, the assumption seems to be that either we've changed our minds or we no longer care about the construction of the sidewalk. So, when my husband and I moved here from central Maine 23 years ago, Saco was a desirable place to build. And Biddeford, well, not so much. We had a sweet downtown with artisan shops, jewelry stores, fashionable clothing establishments, and more. Much of that is gone, and Biddeford seems to have new visible signs of growth and improvement almost every month. Also, when my husband and I moved here from central Maine 24 years ago, there was high hopes of doing something to save the beach at Camp Ellis. Then there were studies and plans and federal funds that came and went and more studies and more plans. Now the beach is almost non-existent. The storyline of the sidewalk on tonight's agenda seems to be a parallel process with the Camp Ellis beach. We've had studies and funds and plans, and now there seems to be talk about rolling this needed sidewalk into a bigger citywide sidewalk plan, making it a bond issue that spells at best delay. We've had federal funds for the small bridge involved in the project for some time. We've spent considerable amount of engineer money on an engineering study, which I believe is the second study <laughs> since I've lived here. Let's not, be, let's not be something that yet is tabled again, or worse, shut down. Let's complete this relatively small project and have a very visible sign of improvement here in Saco now. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone else in the public that would like to address the city council, please come forward and be heard. Good evening, everybody. Tim Valley, uh, Three Cortland Circle. Uh, I am the previous speaker, Nancy Bancroft's neighbor, and I think she just absolutely nailed it. Um, I don't know what more I can say other than, uh, you know, kicking the can down the road is 
and should not be an option. Uh, I have logged on average with my health, uh, let me look here real quickly, folks, on average of 13,308 steps. And every single one of those um, this, this month have been within uh, my home to Bayview, up along Plymouth, down Vines, over to Seaside Avenue, and back to Ferry and up to Cortland. I challenge all of you, every single one of you this evening, to get off you know, your, your work day uh, jobs and go for a walk where we walk every single day. I've done it for 25 years, since, since it was 26 years this coming August. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's unsafe. We have Cheech and Chong driving by every night in their vehicles, stoned out of their, their minds, okay? And it's embarrassing. I've taken my two dogs and jumped into the, the, the soft shoulder area, into a gully. And I have gotten nowhere every single meeting that I've attended. I've watched them all online, and it's, it's humbling to hear others in the community speak up. But it's time for action. The heck with the bond. It's a joke. Do something, please, for the safety of me and every other person here this evening trying to support this effort, and the kids that have moved in over COVID and the expansion of the, you know, our population in that area of, of, of the city of Saco. Do yourself, a, you know, challenge yourself. Go for a walk where we walk, and I'm gonna tell you right now, you'll have a completely different perspective. You'll have a totally different perspective. I thank you. Thank you. If there's any member of the public would like to address the council, please come forward and be heard. Hi, my name is Stu Johnson. Um, I'm actually a member of the SACO BPAC, um, and I live at 4 Layton Way in SACO. And even though, you know, this uh, sidewalk on Ferry Road is kind of the opposite side of the town from where I live. I think it's crucial that we invest in bikeability, walkability, uh, safe streets, and uh, Ferry Road has clearly been a, a crux of that um, in our community for quite a while, as evidenced by the last two speakers. And um, yeah, just I think thinking Long term, uh, the more that we invest now in active transportation and active recreation, the happier, healthier our community will be, the safer our community will be. And yeah, I think um, I have two, I have 14 month old twins, and um, I'm an avid road cyclist and mountain biker. I feel very comfortable riding on our streets and walking on our streets where we have sidewalks when I'm not with my kids. But when, we, when I have them in tow, it's a very different experience. And I uh, realized how, how limited we are in areas that are actually much safer for families uh, in the last couple of years. And that's been pretty eye-opening. And, uh, you know, there's always that question of, like, are there enough people that would use this to justify a $1.5 million investment? And my <laughs> immediate answer is definitely. I think there are so many people. If you go on the Eastern Trail, you see people walking around on our sidewalks all the time. It's uh, an investment in this might seem like a lot of money at first, but it's, it will pay back in spades in the... Uh, health and happiness of the community. And please consider Jenkins Road for a uh, sidewalk in the future. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Michelle Valley, and I live at 3 Cortland Circle. And I concur with what everybody else has said I am an avid um, outdoor person. I have 
walk the streets in Saco for 26 years and take my life at hand every day. I think what my husband said, for you all to go walk where we walk, you should do that and see how unsafe these roads are. I have two dogs, and a lot of times I'm by myself. And I've had people, young kids, whatever they are, honk at me because I'm in the you know, on the side of the road because there's nowhere else to go. That's scary to me when I'm alone. Um, my friend and I were walking the other day and she told me that a few days before she was walking with her dog on the correct side of the road, a car going in the other, you know, a parallel with her was avoiding a biker and almost took her out. There is no place for us. I, I, it's not a privilege to have sidewalks, is it? Why does the sidewalk end at Bayview on ferry and we get nothing down our way? We pay a lot of taxes. Our, my taxes have doubled since I've lived here and I don't know what I've gotten for it, but I don't know if you all are waiting for somebody to get hit and die in order for action to be taken, but there are a lot of young children that have moved into our area past Bayview friends of mine who have little kids walking with strollers, and I just don't know what it's going to take. But I don't know if you want blood on your hands, but something has to be done. And, I, and, and there's so many funds that are frivolously wasted in this community. It's disgusting. And we would really appreciate some action. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kevin Roach, 18 Vines Road. Um, first off, I just want to address the, um, the excitement that's going to be coming to the city for our bond vote in November for new schools. So anything that's in the budget to make sure that that process goes smoothly to get that vote. We have state money, big state money coming in for that. Um, and I want to make sure that that eye on the prize is not uh, forgotten. Um, I'm up here to, as my role as president of SOS Saco Bay, to just um, reemphasize and highlight, um, you know, some budget priorities for uh, the shoreline area. Uh, one is um, in your budget. I, I hope there's enough legal and administrative for the upcoming negotiations with the PPA, with the Army Corps. Um, um, again, we have $45 million coming to us now um, under what I consider a two-year cycle. So it's going to be two years or it's not going to happen. So with that, that is a huge economic driver because $45 million is going to be spent in our local businesses and, and, and whatnot to, in the end, save our beach for the entire community. The entire community is to enjoy that. I mean, yes, we want to save properties, but, uh, and those properties have increasingly increased in value, which, you know, makes a lot of the residential tax base come from the beaches and, and, the, and the neighborhood. Um, the other thing is economic development down at the harbor. Um, I'm very encouraged that we're going to have a harbor fest down there. Um, you're going to need some cleanup down there, and I think we know some of the spots there that, that need, need attention to show off our city. Um, you know, we cannot accept code violations and decrepit uh, situation if we're trying to show off how great we're he here to save our shoreline and enjoy the community. Uh, and also, uh, preparation in your budget for more activity down there, which, um, you know, includes the uh, trolley. You know, I really want the, um, the Transit Authority to be want to hear from this council that, you know, for not much money, that trolley service is down there. And then finally, on the, um, on the sidewalk issue, I mean, eventually, we're doing this for a reason, right, to track people down to the beach. And, you know, that's a, that's a hell highway down there. So what I ask, what I specifically ask, knowing, especially knowing the burdens and priorities of down there is that 
is that you make sure the sidewalk momentum continues. However that is done. However that's done. All right, maybe an all-inclusive bond is too long to wait and the bond is not good for November, but this should be a priority. Remember, if the Army Corps, if the, if the Army Corps does come down there, which we do think in the next couple of that those are trucks after trucks after trucks coming down there, so we better make sure they come down Seaside and they don't come down Ferry because we're going to have a we're going to have a more hellish situation down there. But all I all I ask from my seat, my own individual, I, I live near there too, is that keep the momentum going. Do not stop. There's got to be budget ways to to at least keep momentum going and to the to the big prize of, of say a new sidewalk. And you have not just bond. You also have that transportation TIF, okay? And I would, I would call Ferry Road part of the transportation corridor. All right, so thank you very much. Thank you for all the hard work and, and good luck on the budget discussions. Thank you. If there's anyone else who would like to speak to the city council, please come forward and be heard. Hello, my name is Chelsea Hill. I live at 108 Bradley Street in Saco, and I'm a member of the BPAC, but I'm here speaking um, on my own behalf. Um, I would just like to encourage you to make this investment um, of $500,000 in active transportation in Saco, and um, in the way I understand the way that it's structured, it would benefit people for a long time. It would roll over, and I don't have a whole great grasp on how that works, but I understand that in the long term it's a good move for us. Um, a couple years ago the city invested $125,000 in a plan that mentions bicycling and pedestrianism on almost every single page. So this investment would be a strategic investment in actualizing and operationalizing that plan that you spent more than 20% of the amount to develop. So it's really not that much money. Um, and it would be the next logical step in, in what you would do based off of what you paid that um, expert consultant to tell you. Um, I've heard people use um, different descriptors for the plan, that it's just a guide or it's just the general direction that the city wants to take and there's nothing holding us to this, this um, comprehensive plan. But it has been signed off by the state and it really is what everyone in the community bought into and believes that the direction the city wants to go in. So um, I would encourage you to use it as the letter of the law and not just an idea that you'd like to see maybe happen someday. Um, right now, I live three, three houses away from Bradley Street Deli, which is a great little deli on the corner of Maple and Bradley. And I can't give my son like 10 bucks to go buy lunch. He can't cross the street there because it's so unsafe. I've been nearly hit. Um, more than a dozen times this school year trying to get him from our house to young school. And that's using crosswalks. It's not just like walking, you know, jaywalking or whatever. <laughs> um, people just don't obey the current infrastructure. And frankly, we can't um, punish people for that because the infrastructure isn't there. The, the roads, it's like we're asking a a fish to ride a bicycle, right? We're giving people very wide lanes marked like highways with double yellow lines down the center, <clears throat> not a lot of signage, um, and we're not, and then we're telling them, why are you driving so fast? We're going to ticket you um, into oblivion when we know people don't have a lot of money, uh, extra money right now. So it's really not fair that we give people essentially a blank canvas and then demand that they drive 25 miles an hour. A recent speed study on Bradley showed that the 85th percentile of traffic is traveling at 40 miles an hour. Um, that's huge. That's um, nearly double the speed limit um, in a residential neighborhood. And a classically trained traffic engineer would tell you that the 85th percentile rule is that, oh, well, we just raise the, raise the speed limit because the vehicles dictate what the speed limit should be. And that is not what we should be doing. We should be demanding that the design provide the speed that we want to see through our neighborhoods. Um, thank you for your time, and thank you for um, seriously considering uh, supporting this effort. Thank you.
there's any member of the public that would like to address the City Council, please come forward and be heard. Hi, I'm John DeGeorge. I live at 585 Ferry Road. Um, I just Not to reiterate uh, everybody about the sidewalk, but um, a couple of things. One, we're the house that was right in front last year when there was a massive car crash. Uh, two kids were racing, um, hit a tree. Uh, that happens almost during the summer. Uh, every other night that there's cars racing, it happens during the day starting probably about 4.30. Um, you know, I can give you a little bit of, uh, to talk about what Tim said, to come down and walk. Um, I mean, I have young daughters, and the walk we take is we come out on Ferry Road, we walk down to Ferry Lane, that has sidewalks, we go around there because it has sidewalks, we kind of run, walk fast to get down to Seaside, where at least Seaside is a little bit more open, we'll walk all the way down to Seaside, go back onto sidewalks through Plymouth, and then take our life in our hands when we're walking back down Ferry Road because it's narrow, uh, it's just rocks on either side. Um, you know, there's cars that are going fast, especially in the summertime when, when you know, everybody is, is vacationing. It's only really one of the one ways from Saco to get down there. So, you know, everybody going to Hewitt's, there's just a ton of people and it's dangerous. And I hope you would consider putting a sidewalk. Thanks. Thank you. Last call for folks that want to address the city council. Moving on from public comment to the approval, item seven of the agenda, and that is the approval of the minutes for April 24th, 2023. Is there a motion? So moved. Councillor Hatch, is there a second? Second. Councillor Berman, any discussion on the minutes from April 24th, 2023? Roll call vote, Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Purdy? Yes. Councillor Gunn? Yes. Councillor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0 to approve the minutes. There's no consent agenda item for uh, item 8 of the, uh, the agenda. So that brings us to item 9, action items on page 2 in your packet. We have in a public hearing adoption of the fiscal year 2024, fiscal year 2028 capital program assigned to Councillor McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On March 27, 2023, the city administrator presented a recommended fiscal year 2024 budget which included as section three of the overall budget, the five-year capital program. The council discussed the capital program as part of the April 24th workshop. I move to open the public hearing on the fiscal year 2024 through 20, fiscal year 2028 capital program. Second. Motion's been made by Councillor McPhail, second by Councillor Johnson. I'll open the public hearing on the fiscal year 2024 through 28 capital program. Any discussion? Roll call to open, Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0 at 7-10 p.m. Those members of the public wishing to uh, speak to the City Council on the adoption of the capital program from 2024 to 2028, please come forward and be heard. Hello again, my name is Stu Johnson. I live at Four Layton Way in Saco. And um, I, was, I would like to encourage you to adopt that um, uh, $500,000 capital improvement um, uh, that Councillor Berman had uh, sponsored towards active transportation. Um, I think that will, as I mentioned earlier, I think it, Every investment that we make towards active transportation um, now will, will really benefit our community in the long run. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don Pylon, excuse me, Don Pylon, Glen Haven Circle. Um, I would only urge the uh, Council and department heads to uh, seek um, grants that may be available to uh, them uh, to offset the cost of any capital improvement, uh, i.e. 
uh, vehicles uh, or any other equipment that may be available to them as they, um, as they seek equipment um, in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you. On the last chance for comment on the capital program. Councilor McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the public hearing and be it ordered that the City Council set the vote for the fiscal year 2024 through fiscal year 2028 capital program for May 8th, 2023. Second. Motions have been made by Councilor McPhail, second by Councilor Johnston, close public hearing and set final reading. Any discussion on the item? Roll call vote, Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0 at 7-13. That brings us to item on page three in your packet. Uh, item B is a public hearing adoption of the fiscal year 2024 municipal budget assigned to Councilor McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On March 27, 2023, the city administrator presented a recommended fiscal year 2024 budget. The school board voted on their budget and it was subsequently uh, moved forward to the council for consideration. The council met with departments and agencies to review and discuss budgets in workshops in April. I move to open the public hearing on the fiscal year 2024 city budget and the, the fiscal year 2024 budget for the Water Resource Recovery Department. Motion's been made by Councilor McPhail. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Hatch. Any discussion on opening the public hearing? Roll call vote. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0 to open the public hearing at 7.14 p.m. Those members of the public wishing to address the City Council on the Adoption of the fiscal year 2024 municipal budget, please come forward and be heard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Administrator Canreth, Councilors. I'm David Plav, and I live at 36 Lower Beach Road in Saco. Uh, in 2022, Biddeford Saco Old Orchard Beach Transit abandoned the Camp Ellis to Old Orchard Beach Pier trolley line, citing a lack of drivers and reduced ridership. Yet the city paid a full allocation to BSU despite the reduced service. And there appears to be no real plan to resume that service in 2023. And we continue to pay a full allocation. In response to a question about the Camp Ellis line posed by Councilor Berman at the April 24th Council meeting, BSU Director Hyde said that he did not feel that the ask of the citizens and businesses was congruent. But let's be clear, we have just one goal here, and that's to restore service on the Camp Ellis to Old Orchard Beach trolley line. Towards that end, we sent a, mem a memorandum last Friday to Mr. Hyde with a suggested four-day-a-week schedule and a desire to work toward increasing ridership through marketing and promotions. That should clarify the questions that he might have. I shared that with all of you as well. Uh, furthermore, we presented a petition with 400 signatures last year in an effort to get service resumed. The trolley has been a fixture on the summer landscape of Camp Ellis. As we're trying to reinvigorate the area, the trolley's return would be another shot in the arm. We're reviving Harbor Fest, have a new owner of the general store, and second-year owners at Hewitt's, all working hard to keep Camp Ellis as a summer destination of which we can be proud. Our local businesses and activist groups will do whatever we can to encourage riders. BSUB needs to find drivers. They're budgeted for drivers, so we implore them to fulfill that obligation. We only need one or two, perhaps school bus drivers who would like some summer income uh, or whatever to get up and running again. If BSUB is unable to maintain the service for which it is paid by the city to provide, SOCO should reduce its contributions and seriously question the 12% increases scheduled for fiscal 25 and 26. Let's let this be the litmus test for BSUB to act responsibly. Thank you. Also, a special thank you to Councilor McPhail for uh, catching a typo in my presentation to Commission, uh, to Director Hyde, um, my copy editor was forced to evacuate due to the impending storm, but we've rectified that situation going forward. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Councilors. My name is Christopher Gordon. I live at 34 Pine Ridge Road, and I'm here to speak in support of Saco Main Street. My wife and I moved to Saco just under 10 years ago, several months before our first child was born. We moved to Saco primarily because we wanted to remain in the York and Cumberland County areas. We wanted to ensure that our future children would have access to a wonderful education, education system. And having lived in various apartments in the Portland and South Portland area, we wanted to finally be a part of a community. Although the first two objectives were completed rather quickly, we were not naturally social, so becoming part of a community both literally and metaphorically was a little harder to come by. In 2016, my wife, Holly Gordon, reached out to SMS to volunteer and shortly thereafter was hired as their program coordinator, a role which she serves with distinction in to this day. Uh, Saco Main Street has become much more than a nine to five job for our family. It has in essence become an extension of our family. Over the last six plus years, I've watched in amazement as Saco Main Street has become interwoven into the fabric of this city. I have both witnessed and participated in volunteer drives, putting on events both big and small, reaching out to community leaders, bettering the lives of families in Saco, instilling a sense of pride into our corner of the state. Festivals, parades, car shows, family events, live music concerts, and most important of all, promoting a sense of unity in our downtown area. These have been their hallmarks for years now. And I know with the current leadership in place, this will only grow from here. Yes, they've had leadership changes and growing pains. They've continued to see what works and what doesn't. They've maintained a sense of vigilance and purpose under public scrutiny. This is what every organization goes through. But to me, their continued presence in this city is promoting the idea that if you live in Saco, you're more than just a resident, you're a member of this community, and you belong here. Since we've moved here and started raising our family, Saco Main Street has become as important to me as I hope it has to many families in this area. So we did accomplish our third objective, which is becoming part of a community. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, my name is Patrick Conlon. Um, I, if I understand the agenda correctly, this is the appropriate time just to speak about the um, capital reserve um, that Councillor Berman has put forward the amendment for. Um, I'm a resident of Biddeford. I don't live in Saco, but I attend all of the Saco Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee meetings and I get involved with their initiatives and real advocate for safe streets and a lot of the things that people have spoken about earlier. Um, the, um, I, I, think, I think a good many people, they have a hard time understanding why it makes sense to set aside capital funds for future projects. But the way I look at it is like when I was a kid, my father taught me to save, you know, save some money, you know, put some money aside so that you have it in the future when you need it. Um, I also work as a trail manager for the Eastern Trail, and um, we're constantly working on trying to find funding to build out more of the off-road sections of the Eastern Trail. And that funding, state, federal, it always comes with a need for a match. There's always a need, there's always a, like you have to match some money, you gotta put some of your own in there. And I understand that that's what this would be used for, would encourage it to be used for that. So really support that idea, because that if you have the money in hand, and you, then you, there's like no reason to not apply for the funding, because you have the match ready to go. So it would make total sense to do that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, over a lot of years, I've been advocating for safe streets and a lot of this kind of stuff, and bike lanes, and sidewalks, all, this, all these types of things. And a lot of times people say, well, you know, we don't really see that many people riding bikes in our neighborhood, so why should we build these spaces for them? And I like to say, you didn't really see very many people swimming across the river, but built a bridge anyway, right? So I'd like to uh, 
ask you to, you know, strongly, I strongly support um, Councilman Berman's uh, idea, and I'd like to ask for your support for it as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last call for public comment on the budget. Councilor McPhail. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the public hearing and be it ordered that the City Council set the vote on the fiscal year 2024 City Budget and the fiscal year 2024 Budget for the Water Resource Recovery Department for May 8th, 2023. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Hatch. Any discussion on the uh, closing and setting final reading? Roll call vote, Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 at 7 23 p.m. That brings us to item C of the agenda on page five in your packet. It's one reading post issuance compliance policy assigned to Councilor Hatch. Thank you, Mayor Doyle. Uh, this policy has been reviewed by our bond council and the ap applicability uh, in the introductory section expanded to cover all applicable types of tax advantage debt issuance. The city council approves the revisions of the city of Saco post issuance compliance policy and I move to approve the order. Motion's been made by Councillor Hatch. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councillor Johnston. Any discussion? Roll call vote, Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Brings us to item D on page 11 in your packet. It's a first reading on budget amendment number five, police department revenues, assigned to Councilor Archer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a former employee of the police department took a position with an another municipality. The city of Saco received payment to cover the cost of the main uh, Judicial Criminal Justice Academy uh, certification, sorry, MJCA. The police department and human services wish to make use of these surplus revenues to fund needed recruitment and retention programs, as well as some other needed equipment purchases. Be the order that city council approve the first reading of budget amendment number five, fiscal year 2023, moves to schedule a second and final reading for May 8th, 2020. Three, I move to approve the order. Second. Motion's been made by Councillor Johnston, second by, excuse me, Councillor Archer, second by Councillor Johnston. Any discussion on the budget amendment? Seeing no discussion, roll call vote. Councillor Archer? Aye. Councillor Purdy? Yes. Councillor Gunn? Yes. Councillor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. That concludes the action items of tonight's agenda and brings us on to new business. And first up under new business is item, thir excuse me, item A on page 13 in your packet, adoption of the fee schedule for fiscal year 2024. Any questions on the adoption of a fee schedule as presented in the packet? No counselor seeking any deliberation. Is there a counselor willing to be the resource? Counselor Johnston, thank you. So that brings us to item B on page 32 in your packet. Adoption of the fiscal year 2024 Water Resource Recovery Department budget. Any questions on the WRD budget? Is there a counselor willing to be the counselor gun? Thank you. That brings us to item C on page 34 in your packet, the approval of the BSOB transit budget. Any questions on the BSOB transit budget? Councilor Berman. Not so much a, a question as a comment, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I agree with the statement uh, by David Plavin and, and others. But I find it very troubling to see uh, an increase in the, in the fees that we're paying to the BSUB 
At the same time, we're getting a reduction in our routes, and I would have a great deal of trouble approving an increase in the budget next year if we don't see a restoration of service uh, to Camp Ellis. That's critical for our economic development plan. Thank you. Council Archer. Uh, yes, I'm just seeking clarification. Um, I always get this confused. It's because it's Tri-City, the charter of the organization, um, it's the lowest of the three cities budget that gets approved. So if we were to increase and as another city decreased, it would actually be the decreased amount that we pay, correct? Because it has to be fair share? It does have to be fair split between the three cities. That's why... It's the lowest common denominator, correct? That's why there's some new services and new routes that can't just be brought into light for one community mm -hmm. because they all pay the fair share for their overall budget. Thank you. Councilor Johnston. Thank you. Um, probably should ask this when the director was here, but is there any indication as to what this Camp Ellis route would cost to operate? Or I, I can't answer that. Uh, I think Count, uh, BSOB executive director, uh, when he was here, kind of explained uh, to the council that they're having staffing shortages just like everyone else. Uh, but he did say, and I, it should be very clear, that if he could find something that worked for all parties down there, because there, apparently there are some parties on different sides, uh, he would do everything he could to make that work. So, uh, again, I think there's some collaborative effort. There. Was it under the current budget? That's, that's he, he didn't say new money or old money, so I'm guessing it's under the current okay. proposed increase. I would just ask the city staff uh, reach out and answer those questions or have those questions answered for us. Thank you. City right. Administrator Kenrath. Yeah, thank you. And so as uh, Mr. Plavin mentioned in his public comment, they have received a proposal for us for service, which I believe is still a reduction from what we previously had to a couple of years ago. This is still a, a, a less number of days and I think less routes also. So uh, they asked for a proposal. We gave them a proposal. Um, but we can inquire as to actual costs and because I have not heard any any feedback I'm not sure if the sender of that proposal she said no has received any feedback so we will certainly follow up on that thank you any further questions on the adoption of the B sub transit budget Councillor Hatch, since you're the liaison, do you want to be the... Okay, thank you. That brings us to uh, item D, adoption of the fiscal year 2024 municipal budget. Any questions on that? Obviously that may change with some of the amendments being proposed and what the council do does at their next meeting uh, to approve or not approve some of those amendments, but is there, Councillor McPhail, do you uh, wish to continue being the resource uh, on the adoption of the fiscal year 2024 municipal budget? Yep. Thank you. Any questions uh, just on the general budget as proposed? General budget as proposed. Seeing no questions, moving on. Uh, first up is an amendment to fiscal year 2024 city administrator's budget for capital reserve. City Administrator Canrath, anything you want to say on this item? Uh, this is Councilor Berman's item. I think you're all uh, aware of it. I don't know if Councilor Berman has some specific comments to offer. Uh, also, uh, maybe Lupin Glennis, also, if you had any um, comments on, I know we talked about just informing the council of fiscal impact, what that would look like. Um, so, uh, Glennis, if you have any comments, otherwise I'll turn it over to Councilor Berman. Uh, yes, so as, as I structured the amendment for Councilor Berman, um, the recommendation was to make use of TIF funds we do anticipate to funds in excess of that which is appropriated in the recommended budget because of significant valuation growth in the community. And so this would be structured more as a reduce of return of funds, if you will. Um, the impact on the tax rate would be, 
uh, a little under one and a half points, one and a half percentage points uh, versus where we are now. So um, under the current budget before council, it's a 2.56% increase to the tax rate if we were to layer in um, Councilor Berman's proposal would be 4.67%. So. Thank you, Councilor Berman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, obviously, we've, this is a, a moment of, of active transit. We, we've heard a handful of people talk about the need for more pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure uh, and, and the safety that goes along with that. We are also at a period in our city where we have a, a sewer bond that we've approved and a school bond that we're about to approve. Uh, thus, I believe our ability to put forth more bonds to build infrastructure uh, is, is really not there right now. We know the city's undergone tremendous growth and is likely to continue to undergo growth for some time in the future. Uh, and that's going to necessitate us in investing in infrastructure. And I believe uh, that active transportation infrastructure is, is a critical piece uh, of that puzzle. Right? We know that bike lanes and sidewalks can move more people uh, during busy traffic periods than cars can. That's especially true during our summer months uh, when our tourist traffic reaches its peak. Uh, we've had many, many pleas for the ferry road sidewalk today. That's a $3.5 million project that we've had inadequate opportunity to seek state funding, uh, regional funding, and federal funding uh, to, to, to fully uh, engage in. And thus, the purpose of this amendment is to set aside $500,000 per year into a capital account. This is an account that would roll over and accumulate over time, allowing us to save towards large projects. It's not earmarked towards any one project, thus it could support those projects of highest need throughout the city. You'll notice the funds come from both the downtown development TIF district and the transit TIF district for this first year kind of meeting some of those goals, as, as uh, former Councillor Kevin Roach pointed out, right? thinking about the transit uh, implications of these types of projects. Um, and I think it's going to move the city in the right direction in a way that we simply cannot if we don't start setting aside funding. So I hope you'll support it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Archer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so many of you have known I've been looking at sidewalks from a citywide perspective, and I did mention bonds earlier. Um, I kind of wish we could have had this more in a workshop setting, but it just never came. Um, that's outside of my um, capacity to get it here. Um, but what I was thinking is I do kind of like this, the, the dollar amount. I don't know if it's the right amount, if it's too low, is it too high? Um, still going to be looking into it. Um, but using this as presented, as Councilor Berman's presented, we're looking at four years to fund uh, just um, Ferry Road. Um, so it would be a four-year ongoing project. Um, so again, I'm interested in this proposal for all future development throughout the, the city, but is it wise and what would it look like if we just decided to fund the sidewalk and just get this going forward, making it where I'd make an amendment for $1.5 to $2 million just to get this Ferry Road started and hopefully completed, and then use Councillor Berman's uh, proposal for all future funding in which we can knock out uh, neighborhoods, uh, key areas around the town at around 500,000 per year to have growth over time. Um, I just don't want, um, again, I know it's not earmarked, but as we know, it's about $2 million to fund it. This would take four years just through this mechanism. I'd like to kind of see if we can jumpstart it is where I'm looking at. So, um, could you uh, put in an amendment um, and run the numbers on what if we just took it out of different funds out of this year and fund it as a one-time expense to get that going? And then this, would, this amendment would allow future projects to be uh, planned and moving forward throughout the city. That way, it still comes out to be a, a holistic approach um, of uh, safety mitigation and um, throughout the city. Um, that's where I was thinking as of right now. Thank you. Uh, so um, as a financial officer for the city of Saco, uh, my strong recommendation is that if there is interest in funding any project that is at or above a million dollars, that it go to the voters as a bond. And so um, we could look at year one funding for, let's say, a 10-year bond 
for the cost of the project. Um, and I could put those numbers together. And we still have time between now and November to move through the legal process. Um, but it's a, it's a significant risk to fund any one project at or above a million dollars um, in terms of drawing down reserves and reducing the city's capacity to meet other emergency demands. So um, we could, perhaps we can communicate as a follow-up and see how you want to structure that amendment. Yes, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion on this item? Councillor Hatch. Thank you, Mayor Doyle. Um, I just want to publicly express uh, that I'm in general agreement and support uh, this idea. I, I just have uh, some concerns and that they've become more acute listening to some of the brief discussion that we've had. Uh, I think if, if we're going to go down this path, and I would encourage us to do it, um, having been involved in, in the private sector creating what we would call a sinking fund uh, or putting together um, accumulated funds for charitable giving in a, a 501c3. I've had a little bit of experience with that. I think one of the issues that comes up, and it's an important one, is the fact that uh, as a council, we're, we're, I think, supposed to be good stewards of, of all tax dollars for all, and that any funds that get accumulated in this fashion be um, be controlled to some extent with um, policies or guidelines as to how these monies will be spent on which projects, uh, try to make it as uh, apolitical as possible for the best interests of the city, um, and making sure that uh, when this council, who if we were successful in putting this concept together, leave the council, that future councils understood clearly what the intent was and that there was very little, if any, opportunity uh, for a future council to see this money kind of accruing there and all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, let's just grab that and, and do something else with it that, that, that wasn't intended. So uh, I, I really do like the idea. I, I'm just really concerned that if we rush into this, we're going to create some problems for ourselves unless we, we spend the time to uh, vet all of those issues. It's not that difficult if, we're, if we collaborate. Uh, and I, I'm almost thinking that um, uh, uh, using this as a, a topic for a not too distant, and I mean like really quick, uh, council workshop, there's no reason why, and correct me if I'm wrong, Glennis, that we couldn't do a future budget amendment after this budget uh, gets approved. Is that correct? So the benefit of doing this amendment at this point in time is that we can leverage TIF funds. So in leveraging TIF funds to fund this amendment, uh, we preserve the tax advantages mm -hmm. of TIF funds in that you reduce your valuation to the state. If we move forward with this budget process and do not pass this amendment, but pass it as a mid-cycle amendment, most mid-cycle amendments make use of unassigned fund balance. In other words, you're making use of the city's um, reserve funds to fund this in year one, but the valuation that's sent to the state and used to calculate EPS subsidy um, is higher. So, so if, if we want to take advantage of the use of TIF funds and reduce the city's valuation for the state, we would want to do it at this point in time. Well, I, I'm not, personally, I'm not even sure using TIF funds is a good idea because I don't know what the impact would be uh, for the use of those funds for other reasons. So I, I'm not really, so I'm sitting here and I'm not really clear that in my own head that using TIF funding, I, I get what you just said, but whether or not that's the appropriate. So I, 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 just, I just wanted to go on record in support, uh, uh, but however, I, I do have some, some reservations about um, creating some fiscal discipline around this process of accruing and accumulating funds. And um, just want to make that, uh, make that public. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Gunn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to piggyback a little on Council, uh, Councilor Hatch's comments. Um, 
if we, treat, if we do pass this amendment um, and we treat it essentially like a capital program where you're looking five years in the future and you have to forgive, uh, members of the audience must forgive me, I didn't uh, look back at the uh, discussion that we had two months ago on this issue in terms of some of the details because I know we really got into the weeds on how you fund it, what is also fair for the rest of the community aside from the folks down uh, on Ferry Road. Um, I think the idea is that if you get it into a capital style program where whether we workshop it or we task um, staff coming up with maybe the top 30 or 40 places that could use actual capital improvement, whether it is a sidewalk on Ferry Road, whether it's sidewalk on Jenkins, whether it's uh, adding another foot and a half of pavement on Hearn Road so uh, the, the paint on the side isn't on the dirt and people can actually walk their kids there uh, not, and not have to worry about people bombing down that street, though. So there is a lot of... I know the uh, folks showed up tonight though, about Ferry Road, but there's a lot of folks in a lot of parts of town that are in some serious trouble in terms of you know, how a, a resident mentioned how the roads are designed and how people are going to be people behind the roads, uh, on behind uh, the wheel. That being said, um, to Councillor Berman's uh, point in this whole amendment, I suppose it would be prudent uh, if we're going to bring on another huge bond um, in November to do it this route as opposed to simply bonding it out though. Whether it's going to get done quicker, I can tell you right now, um, I've been doing this for four years, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to make a lick of difference one way or the other in terms of speed, but in terms to actually get the momentum going, and not only get the momentum going, excuse me, for ferry, but for several places in this town that need uh, improvements for bicyclists and pedestrians, and obviously some for motorists at the same time, I think, it's, um, I, I think it would be a prudent idea to approach it that way as a long-term thing, though, because otherwise you're just going to have a situation, though, where one, you know, one section of town wants something done quick, the other section of town wants done something other quick, and just becomes this fighting each other over the same goals, though. We all want a safe community, and it shouldn't matter if you live on Hearn Road or Ferry Road. Um, you deserve a safe place to walk, and uh, I think we can all agree on that, and I think we take that holistic approach going forward and take Councillor Berman's approach going forward of a prudent way to get the money rolling in over time. I think this um, has, definitely has some promise to it, though. I'm going to look, uh, ask him a, some more of the details before next week, though, but I, so far I, I like what I'm hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Purdy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in overall, in general, I'm I'm definitely in favor of, of this approach. I think it's a, I think it's an overdue approach. Um, I don't know the best way of managing this. Whether it should be a program in and of itself, or if it should be maybe rolled into the capital program to be managed. Um, I guess that'd be left to, to future discussions. Um, one question I did have was um, for Director Salas. Um, I'm assuming that the the increase in the in the uh, percentage rate for the taxes is due to the fact that we would have to make up those five hundred thousand um, for the unassigned fund balance. Am I correct? So the way the amendment is structured currently is that it increases the tax rate. And that's because uh, any transfer of funds into TIF districts and use of funds in TIF districts comes from the municipal tax levy. That's where it starts and then it flows into TIF districts for specific purposes to aid in shielding valuation from the state formula. So this is amended as an ongoing expense and therefore it increases the amount of property taxes that would be levied in the coming fiscal year. Okay, thank you. Councilor Berman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just, just a, a couple of points to address some of the things I've heard. Uh, regarding the, the ferry road sidewalk itself, I'm looking back at Director Fox's presentation. I'd like to remind both the council and the audience that that was a $3.7 million project as proposed. There was $1 million for the sidewalk itself, 
There was half a million for roadway restoration. There was 1.7 million for drainage systems, and about half a million for culvert replacement. And, and that last piece would probably have to occur anyway. So we're still looking at about $3.1 million for the sidewalk. Now, I think that's a tough bond to put next to the school bond in November. I, I, I don't think that's the optimal way to achieve that, uh, which is why I, I don't favor that route. Uh, in terms of Councilor Hatch's suggestions, I think having council control of this fund is a really good idea. I'm open to other ways of structuring it too. I think it's important that we resolve that issue. I don't think we need to resolve that issue before next week. It's unlikely the 500,000 will be spent uh, before the next opportunity to have a workshop, even after the budget passes, where we can set in rules and regulations and structures in order to talk about how to manage and allocate these funds. I would point out that as I understand the motion, we're, we're taking TIF funds that would have been returned to the general fund and decreasing that and allocating them towards this specific purpose. So it's not competing with other potential TIF expenditures that the money was slated to be returned to the general fund, thus decreasing the expenditures on uh, TIF designated funding uh, anyhow. Uh, and, and to Councillor Gunn's point, uh, the whole purpose of this fund is to create an ongoing enduring fund that brings that kind of holistic citywide approach. We, we are simply going to need more active transit solutions in the future. We need to build out that infrastructure that is going to be an ongoing need. Going forward, we can do periodic bonds if, if that's the way the council decides, but this is a way to avoid having to do those periodic bonds as well as uh, have funding set aside now to serve as matching funds and shovel-ready projects when state, regional, or federal matching funds are available. So I, to me, uh, that makes us the way to go. The specific details about amounts and structure, more than open to working with the council on. Thank you, Councilor Johnson. Thank you. Um, I think most councilors hit upon my um, points particularly Councillor Hatch, I'm very much in agreement with. Um, so I, I would say I'm not opposed to the concept. I am a little bit fuzzy about how we'd go about this and I would need more details because from where I sit, this really just appears to be an extension of the capital plan. So we at any given budget have the ability to allocate funds above and beyond what staff has suggested to whatever we want. So to me, it makes more sense to just do it annually as a capital Im improvement uh, part of that budget. I would also st state that there's a lot of time and effort that goes into creating that budget based on the professional staff that we pay to figure out you know, what the priorities are. Uh, to me, this almost seems like a slush fund for council to get, you know, pet projects uh, achieved. Um, there, there seems to be already some just confusion, at least, again, on, maybe it's on my part, that we're, we're funding a sidewalk on a ferry road, but that's not what's before me. And I'm a bit concerned that we already have members of the public that think that this 500000 would immediately be allocated to, to a sidewalk when that doesn't appear to be what you've uh, presented, Councillor Berman. Um, what you've presented, like I said, I can be agreeable to. So, I, I, you know, in, in the next week, I guess we need to figure out the details uh, before I am vote in support of it. I would also uh, like some feedback from city staff and, and how, just because the money is there, and this is my own experience of a decade now, just because the money is there does not mean that they have the staffing to actually implement projects. So just having money sit around in funds, my personal opinion is fiscally irresponsible. Um, that I, I think most taxpayers would say if they, they took a look at the books and said, why do you have several million dollars just sitting, not being expended, and we don't have an allocated use, it's a hard pill to swallow from my perspective. Thank you. Director, excuse me, Director Fox, please. I did want to provide one quick piece of um, feedback, just addressing um, whether this is an amendment to the capital or amendment to um, the city budget. The truth is it's both. Um, some amendments are only the budget and some amendments are only the capital plan. This, 
really does cross both. I could put forward two amendments, each to the capital plan, or we could put the municipal budget first. If this amendment is approved, notate a capital plan approved inclusive of prior council amendments. So maybe that's a follow-up discussion on the order for approval night. Councilor Johnston. So, so would this be a special revenue count? Because it, I guess, sorry, I guess from my perspective, in my experience here, is most funds we have are either in the general fund, the capital, TIF, or then we have these special funds, which are all regulated by ordinance or code. And we have neither to date. So it's a little bit of a cart before the horse, again, from my perspective. I, I have concerns that we would allocate funds, a significant amount of funds, without any real understanding of how those would be implemented, how they would be regulated, how future counselors or staff would understand what these funds are used for. Uh, again, my perspective, it's fiscally irresponsible. Councillor Johnson, you uh, had a question for Pat Fox. I probably have, have many, but if we go back to um, several months ago, I believe you had stated that part of your professional opinion was that we take on a transportation, a comprehensive transportation study for the whole city. Um, and there's funding in this budget to go that route, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. That's really what I wanted to point out. There's a lot of common themes to what you're discussing. Um, I think timeline is always tough on pedestrian improvements. People want them uh, a lot sooner than they can be produced. Um, and thank you for correcting the cost of the ferry road sidewalk to 3.7 million. A lot of numbers have been thrown around over the last couple of years, but that is the real number that has been vetted, that has been put against current contract pricing for contractors. Um, that is as, as real a number as you're going to get of what it would cost to make that happen down there. Um, but planning and public works are looking forward to you funding what is already in the capital plan, which is a transportation improvement plan that's going to look at pedestrian, vehicle, transit, bike, uh, you know, needs throughout the community and how they'll be related to private development so that when a private development comes along, we're not guessing at offsite improvements, we're not guessing at costs, we're not trying to come up with them at a spur of the moment. It's gonna be a comprehensive plan and you can use that as a tool to leverage private developers to contribute to, but you can also use it to shape your capital plan moving forward. That plan's gonna take all of fiscal year 24 to produce. Um, so under no scenario does a sidewalk get built on Ferry Road in the next 12 to 24 months without doing a bond to come up with $3.7 million all at the same time to get a contractor and coordinate all of the infrastructure improvements with the water company and other private utilities. Um, that is how you'd have to get that specific sidewalk done in, a, in, a, in the next one or two years. That's the only way. So. But if you wait until FY24, let us go through this comprehensive plan, you will then have those 100,000, 500,000, and several million dollar projects to pick, choose, and prioritize, and guide staff to go get those shovel ready, chase down state and federal funds. Right now we have $600,000 we got from DOT to signalize Jenkins Road. We're not done with that yet. 600,000 is a lot to get from the state. A lot of the sidewalks that have been talked about do not qualify for several of the federal programs we've looked into because they are not in transit service areas. They do not connect to a, they're not within a mile of a school. Um, they're not connecting certain demographics to public services that are needed. Um, they're important sidewalks to those who use them, but they're not high on state and federal priority lists. Um, so, uh, and we also are chasing state and federal funds to match um, the several million dollar bridge connecting uh, Biddeford's downtown to our transportation center. So this council's already committed that we're down that path, so that's gonna be coming forward in the next few years. So I would encourage you to let this transportation study happen and shape your further goals. I don't think it changes how fast we can deliver a project. Um, whether or not you put this $500,000 towards it right now or not, I don't see how staff would put those, that $500,000 into action in FY24. Uh, so you'd be affecting the tax rate, but I cannot promise you that we're gonna be able to put that boots on the ground 500,000 or even secure an additional match within this fiscal year until that transportation plan is done. Councilor Johnson, any follow up? No, he very well answered my question. And again, it goes back to my point um, where 
just because the money is there doesn't mean Director Fox has contractors or staffing to implement any of our wishes. So I have for 10 years been, I mean, Director Fox can, can contest it or attest to this. I've been an advocate towards the capital plan all 10 years. If he had asked for more this year, I probably would have supported that. Um, but just to have money sitting around without a plan in place, I do have concerns with. Um, I think there, there's members of this community right now that, and there's certainly counselors that have, are sitting up here that several years ago when we went from 8.33% in reserve to 167 or so, um, some of us took some flack for that. That was a, a suggestion by the auditors. We're one of the few communities around here that actually have adhered to the suggestion. And again, I supported it, but anybody that looks at our books will say, hey, you have 10 plus million dollars just sitting there. Um, so this is an addition, in addition to that, and rightly it should be scrutinized by members of the public. Um, so uh, again, I'm supportive of the concept, and I think that we need to do a bit more work. I certainly think that that transportation plan for the whole of the city is needed before we go about implementing or, or reserving money um, outside of, again, if you want to put a bond out for this specific sidewalk, we can have that debate then. But this seems to be like a, a, round of, a roundabout way of trying to achieve a goal that you know, people have put forth. And as I stated before, there's many neighborhoods I could bring out here that can be um, you know, passionate, passionate about their causes too. I, I hear whether it's my ward or other wards, they're all passionate uh, and they're, they're equally deserving. So, I mean, this is just a challenge of sitting up here as a counselor and, and trying to please everybody. Um, so I, I guess that's it for today. Thank you. Councillor Archer, then Councillor Ash, then Councillor Gunn. Councillor yes. Archer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Director Fox, uh, if we were to go the way you're presenting with the, like, let the comp plan, the, the, the design of what the needs are over the next 10 years, could you mimic what you do with the future asset replacement schedule to like a sidewalks infrastructure type thing? If you look at page 49, if you have the budget book, there's a great presentation that uh, Director Fox and his department does on our, our, our trucks and our fire trucks, and, our, and he, he pretty much has spreads it out over 10 years. Again, maybe it's 20 years of sidewalks, but could you almost mimic what you do here with uh, infrastructure projects uh, after this study comes out? So for example, um, I know in 2028 that uh, Water Resources Department's gonna need a new F350 at 75 grand. Well, that would be great to know of certain streets in the future and how much that is. And I do know the numbers change, but could we have something like this? Because you even identify where the financing comes from. You also identify the funding sources of all years. So there's a lot of information just on one page on all of our fire trucks and things like that um, that I've always been found. You've been doing this for more than five years, correct? I, I mean, this is what I know yeah. for, for this. I'd love to see that with infrastructure projects over the time, especially if you um, pair it with a uh, Councilor Berman's type of project that we could actually see, you could present again and amend it as needed, like we have it, but it's always been a great way for me to know what the next five years look like. Right. And I think you've balanced it out to be about a million a year. Um, it may have changed due to the last, but that was the number that was always, you've always tried to find a way that you don't come to us for more than a million because we're replacing as we yeah. go. And could we do that with streets, that concept? Uh, we're excited. I, I, I know uh, planning and public works and uh, city engineer, we've talked a lot about this. And I mean, we understand the need for all of these improvements. We want to bring them to you. I've, I'm excited to bring you, hopefully a year from now, a plan that we can boil down to how, how do we get there? And what it, right now, what you see is to replace what we have, here's what it costs. And we've never even put enough money into doing that. But as the city grows and we find these more creative funding mechanisms, I'm excited to explore what are the priorities of where we're going to actually expand our infrastructure and why. Because it's hard for me, I can't bring to you and say, I want to put a sidewalk on Jenkins Road and not Ferry Road or Ferry Road and not Jenkins Road. There's data to support both, but we're only going to be able to do them incrementally. In some places it's cheaper to add a sidewalk than others, but those will be the decisions you can make if we can, give, if we can lay out the expansion. What we haven't taken the time to do is match the expansion of the community to the comp plan and have a consultant on hand to help put together some of those details that staff's not gonna have time to get to. This will shorten that time frame and give you better decision tools. Yes. 
Councilor Hatch. Thank you, Mayor Doyle. Uh, just listening to this, um, I think I'm seeing the uh, fiscal discipline that I was looking for. Um, I'm going to dovetail on Councilor Mar Marshall's uh, ask that you lay this out as mm -hmm. you are capable of doing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm seeing the, the virtues of, of having this uh, plan, this comp comprehensive plan completed. I, I think we just got to give you some time. Doesn't mean we, we drop the, the notion. We can still debate the issue as a council. We can, we can make some commitments to this uh, uh, sinking fund effect, if, if you will, while you're putting together information. But I'd be hard pressed to quantify or allocate without uh, some of that detail. So thank you for that clarification. I appreciate it. This does not press pause on any of our, every project we look at now, every road we pave, we look at bike ped improvements and traffic timing, and we'll continue to do that. So this does not press pause on improvements to these things in our community. Councilor Gunn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Director Fox, this is more of a sort of a devil's advocate question, I suppose, though, because I had plenty of folks tonight who uh, weren't big on the idea of bond uh, for the simple reason of what's probably going to come up with the school, although we haven't taken a vote yet, so I want to remind everybody of that. Um, would it put you in a better position um, as the director trying to, once we get this um, comprehensive idea of what we need, uh, to in the future actually put out a bond, a general bond for stuff like this as opposed to um, a rolling account such as, you know, that is in this, this is in this position. Just financially speaking, long term, considering just how deep we know the changes and the uh, are needed throughout the city and just like with our capital, ongoing though, because obviously by the time you get, you know, you repave all the roads, you have to start at the beginning though because, you know, roads break down. So financially, prudently, what would your advice be though? Should we be looking more towards, you know, eating it basically, lack of a better term, and, you know, for bonds as opposed to a, uh, you know, kind of a rolling account? Um, I think a year from now, I'm hoping to be able to tell you the story with data a little bit better so you can look at that deficit that we have. And if we've said that we have $20 million of expansion needs and we want to do it in the next five years, you start doing the math of what's that going to fund. When, when our capital plan years ago was down to $65,000 for taking care of all of our assets, we had to do some paving bonds and some infrastructure bonds to get out of the hole we had created. We're in a pretty good place with our existing assets. That's great. Let's keep taking care of those. What will now paint the picture for you is what is the deficit on the expansion we want to see? And it'll pretty clearly tell you that you're going to need to pick some of those big projects to bond them. You can't phase a construction project. You can only phase a construction project in so many phases before you're spending a lot more money on mobilization and and project costs. So um, you, you'll pretty clearly, I think, start to see some larger projects that are going to need bonding and some that are grant eligible and not others. The, these are all buckets of information we can provide you once we do this study. Um, so it's going to be a combination of all of those. But yes, there's going to be bonding to expand significant infrastructure. I think Glennis's idea of if it starts getting over a million dollars per infrastructure project, you really have to consider borrowing money to get it done quickly and at the current construction dollars. Councilor, uh, Councilor McPhail. Thank you. Um, Director Fox, is this something that, um, and again, the, the fiscal responsibility of going through this, I'm, I'm not in favor you know, of a large bond at this point, obviously for reasons. Um, and again, having this just generally allocated as open funds, but is an increase of this amount for specifically Ferry Road at this time, would that help with possibly doing some additional signage or creating, um, maybe repainting the lines, some, some small improvements that we could try to go before doing a whole job? Um, uh, we've, we've been adding more. Uh, we, we could allocate. Um, we've been using the bollards to kind of make lanes feel narrower. It, it's a little extra staff time, but they can't stay out through the winter, obviously. So come April, we have to go around and put them out. But they're pretty quick installs. We're going to be doing some at the high crash location of. Ocean Park Road and uh, Main Street, the Hannaford kind of intersection there. Um, that, there's a lot of pedestrian and vehicle conflicts there, so we're going to be doing some more of those. We're painting all of our road lanes narrower. We paint all our roads every year, so they're already you already have allocated money in the budget for that. Um, 
if you wanted to add something for the additional pedestrian um, pedestrian safety and traffic calming signage and devices of, uh, I mean, $20,000 or something like that, uh, $20 or $30,000 for some of those materials, that's an account we would certainly actively use and uh, put towards making these. It, it's visual cues to make you feel like you're in an area where other people besides vehicles are using the road. Right. Um, we, we could certainly add more of those if anybody wants to add that. I, I guess that would be a, a low-hanging fruit. We have some of that built in our budget, but not to do it widespread across the community. Okay. So along the same lines of creating this special account, but it would actually be labeled. Dr. Ellis Clark may, you know, wouldn't be an open-ended fund kind of thing. It would be a very specific. Yes, we could add twenty thousand dollars for pedestrian safety improvements, um, and if you wanted to designate it specifically for Ferry Road, we could also do that. Okay. It's sort of a one-time. And uh, much of Ferry Road is in the transportation district, so it could be funded by TIFFs. Okay, great. Thank you. Councillor Berman, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So budgets are values documents. Right? If you want to know what a person values, you look at their behavior. If you want to know what an institution values, you look at their budget. And when I look at our budget, including our capital plan, but what I don't see is a commitment to active transit. The ferry road sidewalk is, is, a, is a passion of mine. It's something I'm, I'm very invested in. But it's not the only active transit need for our city. There are many, as keeps getting pointed out. But just using the ferry road sidewalk as an example, the sidewalk cost is $1 million, But the drainage and roadway restoration adds another $2.1 million. If we want to really be serious about active transit in the city, we're going to be fixing drainage. We're going to be purchasing right-of-ways. We're going to be putting trails and sidewalks where right now the city doesn't have the ability to do so. I commend Public Works' commitment to, to repainting bike lanes and adding new infrastructure when we're engaging uh, with our current infrastructure and, and working on our currently existing roads. But that's what I see in our capital plan. I don't see a new commitment to making Saco pedestrian friendly, or bicycle friendly, or moving people through people-powered mechanisms, or decreasing the role that the automobile plays in the future of our city, which I think is essential. And, and, and that's the purpose of this fund, so to spark a new commitment not to maintain our current infrastructure, painting new bike lanes when possible, but to really re-envision how we prioritize these kinds of projects and what the city is going to look like going forward. And doing that with new development simply will not be sufficient to fix the problems that we have. So I, I, I enjoy this discussion. I, I think there's a lot more to talk about. But, but the purpose of this fund isn't to do that. It's, it's to spark a new found commitment to engaging in active transit, pedestrian, and, and bicycle friendly transit in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on this item? Councilor Berman, you're still going to be the liaison for this item. Uh, brings us to item D2 uh, on page 38 in your packet. It's an amendment to fiscal year 2024 and city administrator's budget for age-friendly SACO. And that is to increase the funding by $5,000 uh, to the full ask of age friendly. Councillor Hatch, you've been designated the resource. Are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so any questions on the, the $5,000? Councillor, I'm sorry, Councillor Hatch, did you ha want to say anything before we start? I'd be happy to. Thank you, Mayor Doyle. Uh, my, the impetus for, the, for this increase, it's, it's essentially to get the amount to the ask that uh, was, was made by Age Friendly. I think we heard in their presentation um, just the exponential growth of, of the services they're providing uh, to our community um, at, at uh, a very uh, reasonable rate. And as, as these organizations get larger and do more things, um, it puts a lot more pressure on their operating, their need for operating funds. And so uh, if you go back and look at the 
uh, financial statements that were provided to us, um, uh, $10,000, which would have been the, uh, the uh, amount allocated to the uh, operating uh, expenses, was exactly what they needed today. Uh, if you added up the uh, operating expenses in the p l it was about a, a shade less than 10000 10, So the motivation here is to give them a little bit more, to hopefully do a little bit more, and, uh, and there's no doubt that uh, the impact that Age Friendly has had on our community, and particularly our older citizens, is just absolutely phenomenal. So that's the, uh, that's the genesis of it. Thank you. Councilor McPhail. Um, thank you. I would actually like to make an amendment on this to increase it by an additional 5000 um, to assist them with the Soco Cycles program now that they are solely responsible um, for that program. And my understanding is there's, you know, they pay for insurance, maintenance on the um, bike, um, which was purchased by a grant, but the funding for it afterwards is um, responsible. So I would like to increase the total amendment to 10,000. Any discussion on the amendment to increase to 10,000? So city staff will draft up a, another amendment that will be before you uh, next week for consideration. Uh, both Councillor Hatch's amendment and Councillor McPhail's amendment uh, will be on there and you'll be able to choose between the two amendments uh, that are on there. Any further questions on this item? Councillor, excuse me, City Administrator Kenra. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just a clarification for the public or anyone watching. As uh, Gwyneth and I presented when we presented the budget, um, all third party entities uh, we're fully funded in this budget at the current level. Any ask above that is at the discretion of council. So that's how we arrived also at this juncture. And this is the appropriate process for doing something above what their current funding is. So just to remind everyone how the budget was built and how this number was arrived at, all third party entities were fully funded at their current level. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the age friendly budget amendments? No. Moving on to item. D3 on page 39, you have an amendment to the fiscal year 2024 city administrator's budget template. Uh, so this is the template utilized uh, for you to continue to make amendments. Uh, and please, if you have some, get them into city administrator Canrath and uh, Director Salas so that uh, they can be prepared for you uh, and researched and vetted prior to the night of the budget. Any questions on that process? Okay, moving on. That brings us to item E on page 40, and that's the adoption of the 2024-28 capital program. Councillor Johnson has the liaison to the capital plan committee. Do you want to be the resource for this item? Certainly. Thank you. Any discussion on the regular capital program budget. We are going to indeed talk about a, an amendment here momentarily, but uh, as it stands, the capital program by itself. Seeing no discussion there, moving on to the amendment uh, on page 41 in your packet, and that is for city, cop city copiers. City Administrator Kenrath, any uh, update for the council before they discuss this? Uh, I'll invite up our IT director, Ryan Panero, also, if you would like to uh, speak on the copier, please. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> on the spot. Hello. Uh, I think it just moves it from fiscal year 25 to 24. Um, it also, the new lease will decrease the amount in our ongoing lease for our payments. Thank you. Councilor Johnston, are you willing to be the liaison for the amendment as well? Thank you. Any discussion on the city copiers amendment? Okay, moving on to item F, council resolution approving the school budget for fiscal year 2023 to 2024. Uh, you see the cost centers 
uh, and the amount needed to be raised uh, by local funds. Any questions on the school budget? We do have the school superintendent uh, in the audience uh, to answer any questions. Councilor Hatch. Uh, thank you, Mayor Doyle. Superintendent Ray, could I uh, bother you for a moment? I think I've publicly expressed before the need to balance, and I'm, uh, I'm not able to tie some numbers together, but I'm sure I'm overlooking something. Sure. But if I'm going to vote on a $70 million budget, I'd like to know that the numbers add up. So, so let me tell you what I see, Yep. and then you can explain to me. I think I know what the answer is, but I want you to okay. tell me. Uh, I went back and looked at your budget presentation in March. Mm -hmm. So I've got that, that complicated template that yep. uh, tells us what the uh, total budget is and what the state allocation is. I can tie numbers out uh, from that. But in the meeting uh, commentary that's in the packet this evening, um, we show a, a total budget of uh, 49,600,000 and some change. Correct. Okay. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reconcile that number to the budget information that I had previously, and that's where I'm, I'm stumbling a little okay. bit. So if I go back to the template that you gave us March 30th, I, I can clearly see the allocation between municipal and state funding. So at that time, uh, the municipal piece was 20215000 which is in the packet, so I mm -hmm. can tie that number out. Um, it looks like at that time uh, that the state allocation was uh, 17300000 and some change. And we're looking at a, uh, um, our next item, uh, uh, um, a budget uh, resolution for 9871000 So I'm assuming that's the amount that the city needs to fund that the state will not. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the 17300000 from your worksheet, the 20215000 from your worksheet that's also in the packet, and the 9871000 on our next item, and it doesn't add up to the $49,605,000. I'm about $2 million short. And I, I, I'm wondering if that has to do with a subsequent uh, the subsequent change that you, you explained to us was going to happen uh, because of the state funding formula had an error in it? So, there could yes, that could be, all of that could be true, Phil. It's also important to remember that there are more sources than just state okay. and local revenue, such as items like transportation fees, tuition students from Dayton, that may attend the middle school. Um, there are state agency clients, special education costs, main care costs. So all of those things add up to $49,605,957. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> you have adult education costs on top of that piece. Right. So I guess uh, I would ask if, if I could, maybe it's just a matter of uh, a call or conversation just so I can reconcile my two numbers I would feel much better about that and maybe we can do that uh, uh. so one of the things Phil what I can shoot you is a link um, to our cover page and budget sheet and on that sheet you can see all of the different sources of revenue okay. that come into the school department and how those balance out um, what's kind of what will kind of be a little bit uh, well it's a good thing is that while the expenses are at $1.8 million of an increase. The actual cost to taxpayers is at 1.1 when you look at all of those other combined sources of gotcha, gotcha. revenue that come. I, th to I think table. that'll answer my question. So if you could okay. send that to me, I would really Certainly. appreciate it. Thank you. I am going to forward that to um, counselors all. Mm -hmm. I believe that is That'd be a good idea. Thank you very much. Any further questions for Superintendent Ray on the school budget as proposed? No further questions. Who would like to be the resource for the schools? Councillor Johnston, thank you very much. 
That brings us to item I on page 44 in your packet, and that's a council resolution adopting the local funds for school budget fiscal year 2023-2024. We need a discussion on that item. Is there a councilor that wishes to be the resource for that item? Councilor Berman, thank you. And that brings us to item uh, F2, and that is a council resolution approving adult education budget fiscal year 2023-24 on page 45 in your packet. Any discussion on the adult education budget that's proposed? Seeing no discussion, is there a councilor who wants to, thank you, Councilor Hatch. That brings us to item G on page 46 in your packet, and that's to set the fiscal year 2024 property tax due dates and interest rates. Any discussion on setting the tax due dates and interest rates? Is there a councilor that would like to be the resource? Councilor McPhail, thank you. Item H, to reconfirm the authority to apply tax payments to the oldest outstanding tax on page 46 in your packet. Any discussion? No discussion. Is there a counselor who wishes to be the liaison? Councilor Hatch, thank you. And that concludes new business this evening. Again, for those that have uh, amendments, please get them into the city staff so that they can help draft those ahead of next week's meeting. And that brings us to item 11 on the agenda. That is the city administrator update. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, upcoming agenda preview on uh, next week, we'll have our final budget evening for the adoption. Uh, we anticipate scheduling a workshop um, for mid-May, our next meeting after that. I'll be working with the mayor on the uh, schedule coming up and we'll have more details to follow on that with our next uh, workshop meeting. And we have a number of items that have been submitted from counselors uh, for that meeting. A reminder, on uh, May 15th at 10 a.m., the Army Corps of Engineers will be here for an in-person visit, their first in a number of years. So uh, we're excited to host them here. We're gonna do uh, a site visit down uh, at the pier and also have them here at City Hall. So anyone who is interested in joining us for that meeting, please let Tori or I know uh, of your attendance. Um, we're also working to negotiate with BSOB a new uh, station lease that expires on August uh, 31st of this year. So we're currently going through some draft terms and we'll be bringing forward uh, that lease for presentation and approval sometime in the coming months. So just to put that on your radar. Um, tomorrow I'll have my next uh, session of open office hours here uh, from 3 to, 3.30 to 5 on the second floor of City Hall. Of course, all residents and local business owners are welcome and encouraged to attend. I um, want to announce some staff milestones and accomplishments um, we've seen uh, in the last recent months. So uh, first, uh, Tori Gorman, our executive assistant, Amanda Gray uh, in our finance department, and Jen Maynard also in our finance department, uh, participated in a professional development series of priority learning called People of Potential. Uh, in this series, they participated in seven full workshop days over five months that fostered skills of professionalism, good leadership, and other tools for aspiring leaders. Uh, so congrats to all three of those for their participation and obviously for their commitment in growing their careers here with the city of Saco. We'd also like to recognize some new members of our team that we've brought on uh, in recent weeks. I uh, would like to welcome Christy Sear. Uh, as you know, we approved uh, her nomination at our last meeting as our new tax collector. Christy is now here with us and off to a great start. Uh, Forrest Bailey is our new arborist in Parks and Recreation. Uh, Andrew Saxa, our lead mechanic at Public Works. Jordan O'Connor also joined Public Works as a mechanic. Uh, Colin Murphy, a uh, new firefighter over at FD, as well as Stephen uh, St. Hours, also uh, over at FD. So welcome to all of those, and we wish you long and successful careers uh, here with the city. Lastly, I would like to recognize it is Municipal Clerks Week. I'd like to recognize our city clerk, Michelle Hughes, who's sitting in the back here. She does a tremendous job every day. Uh, she's been with the city for over 30 years, and we really uh, appreciate Michelle for all of her efforts. Maybe she'd like to stand up and take a bow. Maybe. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, for all you do uh, every day. We want to recognize your work and happy Municipal Corks Week. Thank you.
Any questions on the city administrator update? Seeing no questions, moving on to item 12, council discussion and comment. Council discussion and comment. Okay, no council discussion and comment. That moves us to item 13, executive session. Is there a motion? Councilor Hatch. Thank you, Mayor Doyle. Be it ordered that the City Council enter into executive session pursuant to MRSA Title I, Chapter 13, Subchapter 1, Section 4056E, legal updates. Motion has been made by Councilor Hatch. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Mc McPhail. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councillor Gunn? Yes. Councillor Berman? Yes. Councillor Hatch? Yes. Councillor McPhail? Yes. Councillor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. We'll go into executive session at 8 28. We're going to take a, a five minute recess, five minute recess, and it's going to be upstairs in Brian's office. Executive session upstairs in Brian's office.
Okay, back from executive session at 8.47. Is there, is there a motion to exit executive session? So moved. Councilor Hatch, is there a second? Second. second. Councilor Berman, any discussion on exiting executive session? Roll, roll call vote. Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnston? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to exit executive session at 8 48. And there is no report from executive session, so that brings us to item 15. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Councilor Hatch, is there a second? Second. Councilor Berman, any discussion on adjourning? Roll call to adjourn, Councilor Archer? Aye. Councilor Purdy? Yes. Councilor Gunn? Yes. Councilor Berman? Yes. Councilor Hatch? Yes. Councilor McPhail? Yes. Councilor Johnson? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to adjourn at 8 48. Have a wonderful evening.